are you coming to me? I think I'm dying here, man. Welcome to the 3B Video Deep Cut Podcast. Watch a few movies, take a few notes. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> Aw, yeah, it's that time again for another bi-weekly podcast with your hosts, Rotten Roger DeMarco and Evil Dead Inks and Crossover Children. All are welcome. All welcome. Go into the light. Carol Ann, this is your father speaking. (laughs) You're going to get a spanking. (laughs) <laughs> Can we just like, yeah, he's like, I've never spanked the kids. Like, man, this is the 80s. You beat your fucking kids. Don't front. <laughs> you well, motherfuckers beat your kids. These are hipster parents that are turn or trying to turn yuppie. Reaganomics, I've... baby. Reaganomics. <laughs> and good Lord, does this, does this film have something that just sends the wife through the roof every time we watch it? <laughs> she gets angry? <laughs> Yes. Oh, okay. Very, very angry. Um, I was going to say that uh, I really like the parents in this movie, but uh, for those of you listening who have no idea what we're fucking rambling about, even though you clicked the title like, of the podcast, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> it, I mean, it's it's true, but I feel I like I literally am having that moment of like I know what the fuck podcast I'm listening to. I know what the episode is because I clicked on it to download it or mm-hmm. to play it. I've never like clicked on it. Like wait, what? Maybe if but it was here on we random. Are. Yeah, it could be on. But here we are doing the exact same thing. Going, oh shit! Well, what are we talking about? Maybe they don't know from all that intro stuff. Today we we're franchise territory podcast time. So what's the next one we wanted to do? Why not Poltergeist? Yeah, a little bit. It's, I mean, it's a well-known franchise, but to me, it's still kind of off the beaten track. Like when you're talking about like the big guys, <laughs> so you know. But it's four movies. Yeah, four movies, and it's more than uh, the last series we did had only three, <laughs> two movies and a reboot. So now we got three movies and a reboot. We're opening it by one extra movie before we get to the reboot. Bum bum bum, which is two months worth of podcasts, and boom, you know this. This movie is a is a different type of movie than um, what we've covered thus far. We've we've really kind of leaned heavy into the slasher uh, genre, especially for the past like year and a half. We've been hanging out with the big guys, you know, and now the we are, hitters. which is weird because this is technically a Toby Hooper movie of Texas Chainsaw fame, but not really. I mean, it's. Toby Hooper's involved, oh, but this is a Spielberg, you know, so... <laughs> There's, like, the one of two debates that are always had about this movie is if it's who directed it, Hooper or Spielberg, which mm-hmm. uh, I remember, I can't remember where I heard it, but somebody was, uh, it may have been uh, Zelda Rubenstein was saying that, uh, yes, yeah, Spielberg was there, but he was there very sporadically. Yeah. Like, it was Toby that was doing, doing the... Doing the the leg work, yeah. That and the. Did you know that they used real skeletons in the pool? Oh my god, I didn't know. I should click this fucking BuzzFeed article. Go through sixty seven fucking uh, pop ups. We're gonna let's just retitle this episode: "The Things You Didn't Know About Poltergeist." <laughs> god damn it! You yeah, can't tell I winked right there. The is the sound of a wink. Winky winks. Um. I'm not going to I'm not going to dispute it. I'm not going to front. Uh, uh this movie has a very distinct Spielbergian look. But, you know, if he's working if he's working closely with Toby Hooper, um and perhaps the use of a cinematographer and or crew that Spielberg has sort of built a working relationship with, I I would assume that the the end product would come out kind of having that Spielberg look, you know, I don't, I'm the, maybe I'm in the weird, weird camp of like, I don't, I don't feel Spielberg or Hooper really off this movie. If you're, they're like, would you believe either one? If there was like a trivia list of like them two names and then maybe two names I didn't even know. Right. I probably wouldn't even think of Spielberg or Hooper really. See, uh, Cause either one feels super like, influence yeah, if anything prevalent. it feels if, yeah it's a mixed drink 
Yeah, I was going to say that. I don't feel that. it comes off either one. Yeah, it's definitely uh, a collaborative effort. Like, to me, though, I, I will say that I do feel a little bit more of the Spielberg. You know what I mean? Like, if this is if this is Jack and Coke, we got a little bit more Jack than we got Coke. The Spielberg neighborhood-esque, but I was like, oh, yeah, that's that's the best I could give you. Yeah, just <laughs> like suburban. The, the the best, best suburban-like thing in this movie is the dude who I clearly like. I've gotten stories on some of my former uh, high school classmates because I don't go to any reunions. I don't keep up <laughs> with anybody. So I know one person that's able to inform me on some of the downfalls of those popular kids <laughs> in school. So I got to hear about one that was one, one of those top tier popular kids who totally became just uh, an alcoholic. The neighbor. <laughs> degenerate. And just has to ride a bike to work every day because he had too many DUIs. So Oof. that's all I could see when we have this shot of this nice suburban neighborhood. And then a dude on a bicycle riding it while carrying a case of open top beer. <laughs> like, not a case that's in, in, in an entirely closed box. Like, the entire open of the, the top of this box is just free flowing beer. So, They're all cans, but it, it's it's a crate. With an open top, and he's just carrying this shit while he's riding a bike, and I'm like, I wonder if that's what that dude from high school is doing. It's like uh, transporting potatoes in the back of an open truck. Kind <laughs> of goes back like, a couple weeks. Like I'm drunk, I need we need more beer. Like send <laughs> send this dude out to go get it, but just give him a bicycle. I'm like here, just get enough to get a case. They're all open, so they're getting flat. Um, and then he <laughs> spills it all. That's what I the way gets me is he he carry he's carrying twenty four cans of beer, he gets, uh, hoodwinked. I don't know what's well. How would you describe these little RC cars that the kids are riding? Just are out there just to fuck with them, cause him to crash, loses like half the beer, and he only and he runs into the house, which is Craig T. Nelson's house. Apparently they're having a football party, and they mm-hmm. send this dude to go get more beer. On he's only bike. able, and he's only carrying in like maybe six beers. One or two of which are spewing at the time he comes into the house. And then I, I'm this literally this past week watching this movie, I looked at the wife at that moment. I was like, oh, that's why I don't hang out with nobody around here. Like, because I would kick this fucking guy out the house. Like, you coming into my house with beer spewing out of sections of these cans <laughs> all over my house? That's why we don't have friends. <laughs> like, get the fuck out of here. So. Do you want to give the good folks out there in internet land a brief plot synopsis of this film, and then uh, we can start uh, moving headstones and not bodies? <laughs> well, we have a very, like I said, we have a former hippie family that is turned to the yuppie world, living in the suburbs, and they encounter a haunted house. So now, spooky. if you're thinking... Wait a minute, I've seen this movie. Isn't this Insidious? Or isn't this uh, any other fucking haunted movie that's come out in the last 30 years? Yes, Mm -hmm. but much like how the debate is, like, where was the first slasher movie? Is it Black Christmas? Is it Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Did they set the standard? Peeping Tom. Again, we have Toby Hooper here kind of laying the, I would would say, even though it's 1982, the modern groundwork for the haunted house picture. It's mm-hmm. not until we get to the next couple of movies that we get more of a slasher icon face to this series. Right here, it is faceless. It is just an entity that is tormenting Craig T. Nelson and his family. Tormenting Coach, goddammit. Yeah, you, you leave Coach alone. <laughs> Are you Peter Griffin? Make it quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. And uh, we were talking off air. Um, you and I both, I think, have like, sp- like respective films in this franchise that uh, we maybe watch more than one or the other, and I am slightly ashamed to admit that uh, as as like much as this film is like responsible, like you said, for the modern era or the '80s era of haunted house films, or um, it, this is just a very like seminal influential film in the horror like zeitgeist i still don't watch it as often as i should like i know it i love it i respect it i like it 
but I don't get to it as often as I should. And uh, rewatching it, preparing for this podcast, kind of made me go, man, I, I should watch this more. I'm not sure why I don't. But, uh, you know, we'll get to the one that I do watch down the road. But, uh, yeah. I don't know. Because it's, it's, it's not, well, it's it's faceless. So you don't have a set villain. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, not that that's a problem. I just think if I'm just trying to figure out why it's in neither of our, like, regular rotations. But we don't dislike it when we watch it. Right. Uh, is we don't have a clear villain. It is kind of very atmospheric. So unless you're really kind of, like, in that mode... Like, just like the Insidious movies. Like, I like the Insidious movies. They're all... I've not disliked the one of them. But I'm... Mm-hmm. Out two, three, and four. I maybe have watched two or three times. Right. The first one may have the record with three to five watches. So they don't get put on a great deal at all. Haunted mm-hmm. House movies just don't get put on very often. But I have no issues with any of them when we do. But right. I... That's the best I could try to come up with any kind of bullshit excuse as to why we don't watch it more. So, and I also feel like, you know how, like, certain movies have, like, a certain, um, uh, like, a, like, best viewed on, like, a best viewed date, like, with Seven, yeah, yeah. like, you and I like to watch it when it's cold and rainy. Uh, when it comes to Poltergeist, to me, it feels very, like, warm and sunny and summertimey, like, spring, summer, so... Uh, I don't know what it is, you know, the suburbs, the green grass, it's just nice, like a thunderstorm. So I just feel like a nice 75, 80 degree day, like lights on type of movie. It's not, to me, it doesn't scare me, but I feel like my thing with this movie is even though it's a haunted house movie, it's still kind of like teetering on like nicey, nice. Like it's, it's a, it's nice. It's not like gritty, grimy. Like, you know, like a traditional haunted house horror movie, which they did on purpose. They made it kind of like the juxtaposition of like it's it's not uh, like hard, like out of tune piano keys. It's not a bunch of jump scares. It's it's dripping with atmosphere. But for some reason, it just feels so soft. Wholesome, 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 wholesome for a horror haunted house film. It's yeah. the most wholesome horror haunted house movie there is, but it's not really that wholesome. Though. I know, which is weird. That's, it's a conundrum. It, it, it is. A hundred percent it is, because you have a dude ripping his own face off. And <laughs> we have a, a steak and that's Maggots, moving yeah. across a table, which I think uh, the wife uh, said the other day. She, we're just going through epiphanies rewatching this. She's like, you know, this movie's probably the reason why I definitely don't like anything less than well done cooked meat. <laughs> she just is thinking of this movie. And yeah, that face ripping scene been parodied and done a million times. I think our favorite is of course when it was done in Holliston. Absolutely. Uh doesn't look great no. compared to what you could do today. But it's got a I very Ghostbusters it, 84 look. But the sound design, if you just look away and listen to it, it sounds disgusting. Yeah, it sounds like it hurts. It sounds like he's ripping his face off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there are there are really good things in this movie. You know, I know everybody, when you talk about this movie, the things that pop up are the clown and the tree. But I think, you know, there's... I've there's, never been afraid of a tree. That one always, even as a kid, when I saw this, I was like, he's scared of the tree? Yeah. He sleeps with a baseball cap on, too. I just... Uh, yeah, he sleep, <laughs> sleeps in full third baseman gear. Yeah. <laughs> In case a game breaks out, you know, and, they're <laughs> and he has that, like, of course, he's, he's, I know he's gotten shit all his life about this silhouette shot where he's got his big ass front tooth sticking out, <laughs> which rewatching it this time, I was, I, again, I go back to the Simpsons, I was like, I feel like that's the dude from the Dental Plan episode that just oh opens God. his beer cans with it, like, that's Chopper. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, as far as, but like, yeah, the, the, the tree and the clown, like, those are clown the things. Is, the clown is definitely uh, something that still unnerves the wife to this day. Yeah. I mean, it, it definitely strikes a chord with people. Those things, whenever you watch like a hundred scariest moments or any horror documentary you ever watch, if they're going to bring up Poltergeist, bop, bop, they're going to show both of those things. And there are other things in this movie, more subtle, that bother me. And... uh. Whether that be 
the the Spielberg shot, the Jaws shot, like showing the hallway to the room, and they make the hallway seem really long. You know, towards the end. Oh, that's when, fantastic. That's uh, we we both were like, that's great, and uh, we were like, we even had that's even dreams that you have, like you're running to something, and you just can't, it doesn't feel like you're moving at all. Mm-hmm. That's a great, great shot. I love that one. Makes your stomach queasy, like that type of thing. Uh, subconsciously, I don't know what it is. Like that to me is so fucking scary compared to you know uh, a tree grabbing you, yanking you out the window or whatever. Like things Eating like that. You. The the uh, the underglow of the door. In. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like the underglow to the bedroom door, which again feels very Ghostbusters eighty four. That's super Ghostbusters. But yeah, beat it by two years. So Ghost mm-hmm. so so Ghostbusters would be like, oh, that feels very Poltergeist. Exactly. Uh, but it's it's things like that, uh, opening up the bedroom door and you know all the stuff floating around or all the stuff getting sucked into the closet. Things like that really bother me compared to the other things. And th- I think the best part of this movie for me is since the wife is uh, she's you know she's still very much clinging to like hippie. You know she's reading like astrology books and she's really into all of these different things. Joe Beth Williams. Yes, gorgeous. There's, there's some, yeah, there's some things that, uh, yeah, looking at it at 39 year old eyes, that before were not really a thing, and uh, that was one of the first things I was like, man, Joe Beth Williams looking good. Yeah, she is attractive, even but, with two gray, str- st- two Heather Langenkamp gray streaks. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> man, you could leave that shit in there and still look good. Feel like I haven't uh, slept for days, but. <laughs> You look 20 years old to me. <laughs> <laughs> feel to me. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street reference, deep cut. But, like, the fact that she's so, like, open and accepting of it, like, when it first starts, you know, moving the chair across the floor, and she's, like, excited, you know what I mean? Um, she's, that scares me, because she's just willing to let it be, but, like, and See, then uh, and we are the audience. We are Craig T. Nelson going, I'm not, no one's going in the kitchen until I know what the fuck that, why, no. See, to- totally rewatching it. That's exactly what I was thinking. I was like, this this is what Rod. This is what would happen if it was at Rod and Roger's house. Like I totally see, like he comes home, his wife is the one being like, look at this shit. And like uh, your son's just like, ah, fine. And got a <laughs> helmet on, just sliding across, just bored as shit with it by this point. You're like, just describing it to you. And you're just like, Get the fuck out of the kitchen. We are moving. Yeah, there's a gas leak. There's something. Goddamn cherry bomb. That's what it is. There's a gas leak. <laughs> something going on. I smell on. gas. <laughs> Even if your mother doesn't, I smell gas. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, that type of stuff, uh, again, with that 38, 39 year old man lens, rewatching it, that's when I start to feel scared. That's when I start to feel nervous. Is like, anytime that there is evidence of a paranormal uh, incident that's happening and the mother is so dismissive and if not like overly excited like how cool it is and you just know like because you're sitting here watching it you you know you're you're the third party to the situation like this is not going to end good we can see further down the road yeah you should be (laughs) scared right now (laughs) I did want to go back to like the opening of this movie because uh, there's where our first real ghost of this movie is Static TV. Oh yeah, which yeah that doesn't that doesn't really exist anymore. I think you just get a blue screen when you lose a signal yeah, now. Yeah, there, I, I, yeah, I think that could be that's that's a novelty now. That's what someone would use as a screensaver or a cover for their phone. Static, you know, as we used to call it, the Salt and Pepper Wars channel, mm-hmm. yeah. doesn't exist anymore. That is a that is the first ghost of this film is is seeing that because we don't have that anymore. No. And I thought that opening was it was cool that we get the dog that just goes from room to room establishing every character of the movie. And then I thought it was kind of strange that we have uh, Caroline who's what she's gonna be five years old, she's five, four or five, just, yeah. Like just rolls down the steps and starts talking to the TV. And everybody wakes up and starts coming downstairs. I guess Craig T. Nelson, is, he's still on the couch, just crashed out inches right. from it. And they're just staring at her. And I was like, this is kind of like, it's a cool shot. But I, I've also just recently I've been rewatching Freddy's Nightmares again to punish myself. <laughs> I was like, this feels a little Freddy's Nightmares-esque. Because like, 
this is a cool shot and I don't know what it means. And then we just cut away to the next day as if, all right. <laughs> yeah. Like exactly. I thought that was a weird, it's a weird way to open the movie. Not a bad way, but I was like, huh. There are okay. some, there are some weird abrupt cuts in this movie, but, uh, talking about that opener with the static TV, that also is another like static only came when a channel went off air or there was no channel, which is a, a weird thing to, um, try to explain to a younger audience like channels People used to operate channels and at some point they wanted to go home <laughs> it would stop at midnight and they would play the national anthem national anthem yeah and and like the tv would go off and so like if you were up late you would have to channel surf to find one of those weird channels that's that was on i mean if it was a movie channel obviously it was going to be on but if it was like you had basic cable the 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 pickings yeah. were slim after midnight for sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. You better hope you had HBO or Cinemax because they're outside of that. You just gonna watch snow the rest of the night. Yep. I miss snow. I'll be honest. I'm like I watched it. I'm like, man, I kind of miss when shit would just end. But at the same point, like the wife wouldn't be able to survive today if as channels actually ended and she wasn't able to watch some <laughs> sort of streaming something all like. It's All unfathomable night. in 1982 to think. You could watch Unsolved Mysteries around the clock every day, seven days a week, <laughs> all hours of the day. Yeah. Can't even imagine that then. Like, this is the parallels between 1982 and 2023. Insane. Uh, but one thing, uh, and this is the thing that, that sends the wife through the roof, and it's great because nobody apparently in her inner circle sees it because she actually recorded it when we watched it this past time on her phone, sent it to her friends like, to get their reaction and everyone was like I never noticed this before but uh, if you are a uh, a weed smoker it will you won't, won't not see it now but when we get to the the scene of Joeth Williams and Craig T. Nelson hanging out on the bed where Craig T. Nelson has his, his bare ass feet just laying on his own pillow <laughs> <laughs> which I'm like gross but oh shit I do that too sometimes yeah. uh <laughs> Hanging out, he's half-ass reading a Reagan, Ronald Reagan book. Mm -hmm. But they're also smoking, and, and while he's smoking, he's just got just weed, not on a tray. I know it's all not over. on a plate. On the, it's just all over the bed, just on the bedspread. Like they clearly got money, and I was like, they they just have money to fucking burn around here. They just there's <laughs> like. Just rolling joints willy nilly on the bed, and then stand, walking over it when he gets off the bed. He just stands on it and walks over it barefoot, <laughs> doesn't give a shit. And they got steaks uncovered in the fridge, Before, just raw after, just raw steaks on a plate. Just throw that shit in there. We don't care. Like we got, <laughs> we can spend this kind of money on frivolous things all day. They're gonna cook that steak later. It was for later yeah, today. Yeah, had to should we cover it, it? Should we? Yeah, should we do anything with it? Like, no, nah, just open that shit raw and throw it on a plate. It's fine. <laughs> But oh my gosh, their their weed etiquette just send if you're a, if you're a smoker, it will send you through the roof rewatching it, man. Like, <laughs> especially in this time of uh, things going on, because like that is ex like shit's expensive around here. So that's a couple hundred bucks probably he's got there just and just brushes it all the bed like I throw this shit on the ground. I'm gonna vacuum. No it. big deal at all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Don't even care. Uh, savages. These people are savages. They get what's coming to them. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. I There was one other thing that I had never noticed. And this, again, it's going to point out how little I watch this movie, to be honest with you. Um, you know, we're introduced to this neighborhood with this really cool aerial shot, which is... Uh, partially practical then the other half is matte painting of the rest of the town I believe but uh, these are all new housing developments and they're they're being built new new sections are being built and Craig T Nelson is a real estate agent and we I've and again this I've never noticed this and I don't know why like we go from a shot inside of Craig T Nelson's family home in their kitchen and we cut immediately to a house that Craig T. Nelson is selling or trying to sell. And the layout is identical. Like it's suburbs. Yeah. It's literally identical. It's from kitchen to kitchen yeah. and pop. And I, like this week when watching it, I'm like, Oh, like I get it. Like 
I don't know why it had never clicked. Like, cause then the, the guy that they're showing the house to is like, I can't tell these houses apart to be honest with you. And you know, Craig T. Nelson does his sales pitch. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, you're probably right, but we do have a guy who did this once, you know, like blah, blah, blah. Like you can make it your own, even though it looks just like every other fucking house on this street. So like, I, I don't, I don't know if Craig T. Nelson's a good, like, I just can't picture him as a salesman. <laughs> Like, maybe used cars. Like, maybe Bill Paxton's character from True Lies. I could see him doing that. Like, super shady. Mm. Like, garbage, like, glue and tape held together vehicles. But I can't picture him, like, selling me a house. In the 80s, man. They were a different time. He'd probably, you know, show you around the house and then cut you a big fat rail of cocaine that you can... (laughs) And he's just gonna brush on the floor. When he's yeah, like, he's just gonna hold it in his palm, and like in his hand, like not through like a coke nail, like an infamous coke nail on your pinky, or just in the little palm of his hand, curled up, just. And yep. then he's just gonna. No, that's what he'll do. He'll just blow that shit in your face. Like, all right, inhale in three, two, one. Yeah, you got the you Craig, get some. Got the Craig T. Nelson special. <laughs> isn't he doing that? Sh- isn't he doing rails of coke in Action Jackson? It's been a hot minute since I watched Action Jackson. All I really remember from Action Jackson Jackson is uh, seeing Vanity nude because I didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> I was like, yeah. "What?" Uh, which totally and, caught me off and guard. And Sharon Stone. Yeah. Um, but we haven't talked about one of the best character actors of all time, who kind of weasels his way into this movie and becomes <laughs> essentially the catalyst for it all. Uh, I mean, playing the same kid. He's got the same name. <laughs> Good old James Karen stepping playing in. Playing Frank again. <laughs> He's just forever Frank. So clearly after this real estate gig fell through, he just had to get a regular Joe job at a medical supply factory at another in, out of state. In so Louisville, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Had to move to Louisville, Kentucky to get a job there because he's his reputation shot here in, here in the California suburbs. <laughs> Yeah, uh... Not enough of him in it. After, no. Like, at the time, I'd like, if, you, if you're unaware of his work in Return of the Living Dead, which that's definitely a franchise I look forward to one part and not the rest right. when we get to that series, but if you don't know him, you're not going to really miss him too much, but if you've seen his work in Return of the Living Dead, you're like, oh my gosh, why didn't we get more of more of him? The yeah. little bit we get is fantastic. <laughs> oh, what kind of wat- wattage bulb you got in this thing out of here? <laughs> Like just, th- I mean, that's where it's borderline. It's it's like a sitcom where yeah. Craig T. Nelson is trying to hide. Like I don't even know why he's trying to hide the fact that this place is super haunted <laughs> yeah. for a hot minute from him. And other times we're like, they got that room upstairs. That's just going. It's insane. just alive. Yeah, the room is just like alive. Uh, my favorite sequence in this whole fucking movie is. Uh, when they decide to go ask the neighbor if he's having any uh, disturbances, but I feel like there's something on the like there is something on the cutting room floor, and that's what I was talking about with the is the it the edit. poison poison ivy or whatever he gets into like there's an edit because like, I was watching it and they go they go over there and then I see like Joe Beth Williams like slap her side of her face like a bug yeah on they her got or mosquitoes something. yeah yeah but and then the, the next scene they're like they're putting ointment on. Craig T. Nelson, like, he got into some poison oak or some shit. I'm like, did I miss something here? Well, the prior scene, they're standing in their own kitchen, and they're having a conversation, and it cuts cuts abruptly to them at the neighbor's house. There's some stuff missing there, and I I can't remember what it was that they had to cut out. They They had to trim it because something happens in that scene that they had previously, like, referenced, but they had also removed. So it it resulted in oh, like man. a really weird jar, jarring cut, and even though I don't watch this movie often, when I was rewatching it, I was like, Jesus Christ, that cut! Like, it's almost like in the middle, like they they're in the middle of a conversation, and we get like one or two frames of the next shot, like Craig T. Nelson is going to say something, but then we cut to them outside. Like, it's it's a rough fucking cut, and it's so like. Ho- what like in a Spielberg movie that happened like it's very Again, jarring it's some Freddy's nightmare shit where mm-hmm. I'm like I feel like did I either fall asleep zone out or am I do I have a fever right now did I miss something <laughs> but that's so that's what I'm saying is I don't know what else happens in that scene in the kitchen 
But when they're at their neighbor's house, to me, they seem extremely high. Because they're like, yeah, they, that's you know? what. Because that's the vibe I felt like they were putting off to the neighbor, and what the neighbor neighbor was picking up from them, like. I think they're uh, there. You going PCP? PCP. <laughs> <laughs> Jinx. <laughs> we both said it. Yeah, that's the drug of choice we go to is PCP. Mm-hmm. But it's weird. They're very high. They got to be. I, I mean, they. I mean, if nothing else, Craig T. Nelson looks like he, that dude has not slept. Like he should have been in an Elm Street movie because he looks legitimately like he has not slept in days. Yeah. Had the laying camp still look like a million bucks <laughs> after a week. <laughs> Craig T. Nelson's on like day four and he looks like he's literally dying. Yeah. But of course, I mean, how could you sleep when they go, when the paranormal investigators from the college finally show up and they take him up to this room where shit is going on nonstop? I'm like, how the fuck could you sleep? It's yeah. like a circus going on around the clock in there. <laughs> There's Which, literally like a little horse with an incredible Hulk riding it. There's shit banging around, just rotating in a circle. Like, imagine sleeping below that. Or just down the hall from that. You couldn't do it. It's a royal rumble going on around the clock. Yeah, I'm leaving. Like, I'm sorry, Carol Ann, but peace out. You know, like, I'm not <laughs> staying in this house. If it got you, it could possibly get any number of us. Like, I don't... I don't know, man. Like, I'd come back when I got Paranormal Investigators. I would not be in there waiting for Paranormal Investigators at all. Which, I mean, what do they really do? Set up Aside from, like... Aside from, I mean, yeah, I guess they, they do the, the traditional thing we see done a million times since then. Mm -hmm. They come in, they're kind of like, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll check it out. And they start seeing some shit, and they're like, yeah, y'all got some shit going on here. And it takes for things to get even more heavy-duty extreme before they're like, all right, we're going to bring Tangina in now. Yeah, it takes them having, like, the halluc hallucinations, like the face peeling the rotten meat. It takes all of takes all of that before they're like, maybe we don't know what the fuck we're doing, you know? So, um It takes them having a, having shit fall from a portal in the fucking living room for that's things to them to be like, you know, I think something's going on around here. Mm-hmm. That's when they something's start a to fishy. determine like if there's a way out, there's a way in. Which they should have immediately deduced that because she got. I wouldn't have deduced that. I've been like, I would have just been just as confused, being like, I, well, if Carol Ann went did, somewhere, even, she had to. There had to be a way in. Like, <laughs> yeah, I would have been more concerned that there, like, maybe there's no way out. I would not be convinced of anything. Like, <laughs> like enough to enough to like. I mean, until they go do the rope trick, which I'm like. Like, all this stuff, I'm like, this is definitive proof right here. If they're recording all this, we got definitive proof. There's no more no more debate yeah. at all. Like, this is the most, like, should be the most documented case of, yeah, it's guaranteed there's something something beyond us. And even if they didn't record shit, you have an entire neighborhood that has... Watches your house eat itself? That watches that, but I mean, the whole neighborhood's going bonkers, man. The fire hydrants are blowing up. Things are on fire. Like it, it oh, literally yeah. looks like hell in this neighborhood. Yeah, that third act is awesome. <laughs> yeah, it goes full tilt boogie in in paranormal shenanigans at the at the tail end of this flick. Like it's going crazy. I think that's my uh, my f other favorite part of this movie is uh, the bait and switch ending. Like we get a false ending. We get that I would false be so, ending. I would be so freaked out by that, like, watching it, like, because you just get, like, all right, things are done. The house is clear. Whew. Mm -hmm. Why is the movie still going? Yeah, exactly. Like, and re-watching it this week, I'm like, this may be, like, the the most brilliant um, use of that that I've ever seen. Like, of course, we get, like, you know, the Carrie stinger where the hand comes out of the grave or we get Jason popping out of the water. Like those are like a flash in the pan real quick. Like a, just a Ooh, boogie, boogie, gotcha moment. Like, not, yeah, not 10 plus more minutes. Yeah. That is not a false ending. That's a ha ha. Uh, you know, psych. Just, yeah. One, one last little popcorn pop for the audience. This, we get a full blown finale and then we get like, Let's bring in the nice music. The birds are chirping. The sun is up. Everyone's having a good time until the mom has to go back into the house. Or it's, 
It's until Craig T. Nelson just go like, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to work for, real quick. <laughs> yeah, I'll be back in ten minutes. Don't so nothing crazy gonna happen for ten minutes, right? All right. Then we get the wonderful Joe Beth Williams in a bath sequence. Mm-hmm. We don't get to see nothing, but I was like hoping, like maybe I just didn't see it before, and I'll see it this. Like see watch, like I'm watching. Yeah, like I'm watching Silk Stockings. Like I'm gonna get some nudity this time. I just know it. <laughs> I know it. But even just her and her uh, her underwear and a shirt, and like. All right, that's good enough. It's still pretty good. Yeah, not bad. And then the most, then my frustrating scene of Robbie's going to sleep and that goddamn clown. They've packed the entire house pretty much, except but the that one clown. thing he didn't pack is the goddamn clown at the end of his bed. That is bullshit. That'd be the first fucking thing I throw in a box. Throw in a box, by the way. Or I don't burn need this in the anymore. backyard. Yeah, drop accidentally because it's porcelain, I believe. Yeah, or throw it in the uh, in the pool, like something. Just yeah, get that uh, fucking thing our, out of here. Because our good, our good buddy and former guest on the podcast, Sean Clark, is the one that is in possession of that. And that's his most prized piece is that poltergeist clown. He has a glass case. I remember him saying, like, yeah, it's really fragile and glass, I think. Mm-hmm. So just bust that shit up. Pack it away. The fact that that's the only thing left in this whole place, sitting in a chair at the end of your bed that you didn't pack yet. False. Yeah, it's on, it's on, you're it's on bad, you, Robbie. Yeah, you're a bad kid who's afraid of that thing. Like, if I was afraid of that thing, it would not be in my fucking room at all, ever. Yeah, <laughs> it's like the Exorcist poster that you, that we've talked about that you had. Yeah, I used to have yeah point. on my bathroom door. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the equivalent right there. You're like, hmm, maybe I'll just take this down now. I would just I leave my go. bathroom door open so I wouldn't have to see it. <laughs> I don't want to see it. Don't want to deal with it. Yeah, no, 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 no. Yep. So the fact that clan's still sitting there, I'm just like, this fucking kid gets what he deserves at this point. Yeah, no shit. But I do, I love that last 20, 30 minutes of the movie. Because uh, it is important to note that this is not, like your traditional movie does not end at an hour and a half. Um, it's, is it two hours or is it just uh, a hair under two hours? It's got it's a, around. I just know it's around that two-hour mark. I didn't get the exact runtime, but it, it also doesn't necessarily feel it. Never. I mean, you might it feel it does. early on, maybe early on for the first twenty minutes, maybe. But if you've not seen this before, even if you've seen it once or two, once or twice, it does not feel like uh, it drags. No, at all. It doesn't. Uh, sidebar, sidebar. I went and watched <laughs> the new John Wick last night, and that is a three-hour movie that feels every bit of a three hour movie it feels so long decent decent fun movie but it feels long this is a borderline two hour movie that goes by pretty quick and i think that also has to do with like i said it has that uh it's uh not cute but you know what i'm trying to say like a a clean wholesomeness the wholesomeness of it makes it go by pretty quickly because like you never have like um, those big, heavy, uh, like insidious type moments. Like we have some scary stuff, but it all still feels so light. Like you're not like ramping up in adrenaline and you know, like getting all gassed up and then settling down and getting gassed up and settling down. It's all it's a pretty mellow two hours, <laughs> so it, it it doesn't hurt. Like you're high. Like yeah, you just man. smoked a fatty that you rolled at the end of your king size bed. <laughs> then you jumped on your bed and Yeah, uh, jumped flung. on the bed to imitate a diving scene <laughs> barefoot and just took your kid willy nilly back to put them to bed so you can get back to smoking your J in the bedroom like adults do. Yeah, like all suburban adults do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm trying to think. Uh anything else in this movie that uh i mean we could always briefly discuss the elephant i'm sure in the room of people waiting if they've they're new to this entire series or new to us in general but fans of the series what do you want to what do you want to talk about Hmm. everybody wants to know what we think about the supposed curse hmm is the movie cursed? I'll just both that before pre before prefacing with anything else. Like, do you, do you believe there's a curse on this movie and or franchise? I don't, man. I think uh, bad things happen, and uh, I don't think it is cursed either. I think yeah, it's, it's a shit coincidence. You got 120 people on a crew making a movie. 
So, and every single one of those people have their own individual lives and individual people in their lives, families, etc. You're bound to find some tragedy if you look hard enough, you know? Yeah. Oh. There's... I'm not saying the other movies. Yeah, like 60 out of 120 people who worked on this movie's moms died of cancer. Coincidence? Yeah. <laughs> or whatever, you know what I mean? And I'm saying I'm not saying other movies don't have some cursed shit possibly going on. There's definitely some other movies that got some weird, like, well, that's pretty fucking weird. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, with this series, I mean, the first movie alone, this, it, there's j literally the only the tragedy daughter. you can tie to it is, yeah, the daughter. The teenage daughter, is, not, not Carol Ann. Yeah, not yet. Uh, yeah, we have the teenage daughter who post the movie is strangled and on life support and taken off life support and dies mm -hmm. from her boyfriend she had. And yeah, the go-to is yeah, the is it cursed because of the it had real skeletons in the pool sequence, freaking out Joe Beth Williams. And no, because uh, spoiler alert, they use real skeletons in movies all, all the time, the time. <laughs> and have since like the 1920s. Man, mm -hmm. it's not a big deal, really. No, it's not. I don't hear about curses in any of these other fucking movies that have used real skeletons because it's cheaper. And it doesn't surprise me that they're fucking cheaper than to have these things made. You know, also, then, by that logic, every single high school in the United States should be fucking haunted. Haunted. Because we all have, like, my high school had one, and it wasn't fake. Yeah. It was like a real dude's dead bones fucking wired um, together, you know, so you could look at them. Like, I believe we had one as well, and we had no shit going on there. Uh, but yeah, I don't think there's any curse to this film or this franchise, really. I mean, we'll get to the other cursed things when we get to the next mm -hmm. movie and the third movie. There's no cursed shit around the fourth movie that I know of. Do you know of any? No. We'll see, I'll see if I can find any by the time we get to the Sam reboot. Rockwell hasn't won a million Oscars? <laughs> well, they're curse. like, you were in Ninja Turtles 1990. You get no Oscars, sir. We don't respect that kind of work around here. Yeah. Bullshit. Uh, spoiler alert, Sam Rockwell. That was his whole audition for that pro for that movie, probably. It was like, can you say regular or menthol? You hold up some cigarettes? Yeah. Can you wear a yeah. greasy white shirt? <laughs> but, uh, Call Craig T. Nelson back. Like, we don't need you for the reboot. We're going to go somewhere else. Which, man, Craig T. Nelson's like listed as the star of this movie, and at least the first two. He is not like top build on IMDb. Like, it is Joe Beth Williams front and center. Oh, yeah. Well, third. Sure, I mean third is Craig T. Nelson. He's behind Heather O'Rourke. Well, so Joe Beth Williams, right, was she in she's in like I think the, she was, uh, the Brood? Like a, I don't know of any movie, other movies she's done. I think her career was just doing uh, soap operas before she got this role. She was okay. not a name, a real big name at the time. But now she is. I mean, it's, I mean she's a character not actor, to be, dude. Yeah, not, like to be, TV not, series? To be, not to be shit, but I was like, is she? Yeah, like, I think what so. Else? I don't know of anything she's done after this. Probably a million TV series, like one episode here, one episode there. Um, oh, yeah, all, all things I've just not seen. It's out of my wheelhouse, apparently. Right. But, uh, yeah, I, I I I love Sam Rockwell. That's that's where I was going. It's just <laughs> I fucking, like, I just think Sam Rockwell is the goddamn man. And I think that was the catalyst, which made me like the reboot so much, is he can do no wrong in my eyes. But, uh I have not seen the reboot. Uh, the wife had seen it on Ambien. <laughs> so and yeah, she doesn't right. remember. She doesn't remember a great deal of it. So it'll be a new experience for the both of us when we get it's to that fun. movie. It's a very fun uh, modern take on Poltergeist, which bombed. I think. I think a lot of people didn't like it, but we'll get to that and in a few weeks. Um, which remake hasn't done that really in this in this day and age? Has any remake been successful? Mm, All right, yeah. Been a hot minute. Yeah, been a hot minute. I don't think. Don't think of one. Um. We haven't really discussed her at all, other than the fact that she did have an untimely death in like making these films. But uh, the actress who plays Carol Ann uh, is amazing. I don't like to throw around amazing too often when it comes to like a child actor. She's pretty fucking rad. There are They're a couple, few and far between. <laughs> yeah, and uh, there are a few times, especially in the finale of the film, she spikes the lens. You know, she's she's a five year old kid. She's looking directly at the camera a couple times, but like, she's got a good dead stare. And you, yeah, but you can't help but just fall in love with this kid. It's it's a hard thing to explain. Like, 
perfect way I could sum that up that I may jump in and try to assist you there is her bird dies. Joe Beth Williams is going to flush it down the toilet. Heather O'Rourke catches her. Mm-hmm. So they go and do the full burial thing, which I just had to do this recently myself. Uh, so it, it hit worse than normal. But putting in the whole, like, in case he's hungry in the box, like, so he doesn't forget about us. So, so, oh, Jesus. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is heavy to do heavy duty stuff right now. And then burying it and, like, tears down the eyes, like, burying it. But just like, just how kids are just so resilient. Like, that, that thing is not buried for more than three seconds. You're like, I get a fish now? Yep, exactly. Like, like, they just, the kids can just bounce the fuck back from that shit so much better than we can. We're just <laughs> in our old ways. Nostalgia has just taint, taint, tainted us so much that it's just gonna, like, I'm still getting over uh, what I've had, uh, the pet we've had to put down recently. And it's been a couple weeks. This kid was not even a full minute and like, what's next? Yeah, what's my next like, pet? Perfect. And not like, it doesn't, doesn't come off snotty or shitty, like, totally like she's like... Innocent. Yes, 100%. Yeah, and uh, I think that definitely aids in your um, just adoration, your care for this kid. She's she's a wonderful kid, and for the most part, when I watch this movie, I feel like the person who gets it the worst is Robbie. Like, Robbie, Robbie <laughs> the fr- gets cause he's he's Because he's the middle child. Middles are, middle kids are forgotten. Yeah. Well, I mean... Yeah, he has a pretty gnarly fucking room. Uh, but yeah, he's the forgotten middle kid. They're literally like leaving him in a room after they save him. They're like, all right, we got to go care about the important kids now, the oldest <laughs> and the youngest. Yeah. You stay here. <laughs> yeah, 100%. There's a scene where he's just like, uh, I was just eaten by a tree. <laughs> <laughs> you guys going to leave me alone? I'm going to need therapy for years. Yeah. But yeah, I feel like he gets the brunt of it a lot in the movie. Like, he gets a lot of the scares. But uh, that comes with because we have to take Carol Ann away. So, Carol Ann yeah. is in the, the further, <laughs> if you will. She's gone. That's exactly what I called it the other day. I was like, it's the further, but yeah. we just don't get to see it. And so she's gone. So we get her voice, but we have to have someone else step up and take the brunt of the scares, which primarily is Robbie. Not a lot happens to the older sister. Not like... No, because she... she like, like, I even asked at one point, they send the kids off in a taxi. I'm like, where the fuck are they sending them to? And then I was like, oh yeah, they got money to run their power. Just like, can you just circle the block in this taxi for a few days until yeah. we figure out what to do next? S- send them to Aunt Patty and Aunt Selma's house. <laughs> yeah, they, we have no establishment of other families, so I don't know where the fuck they're sending these kids, and I don't know wh- where they go or when they come back, but yeah, the oldest is just like... She just at one point just fucks off and goes to be with a boyfriend, mm-hmm. and totally makes like like it's subtle shit like they reference the Holiday Inn, and she's like, "Oh, I know where that is." How the fuck do you know where that is? Mm-hmm. And then when she makes her big return at the end of the movie, she was supposed to go hang out with friends. Got a big ass gigantic hickey on the side of her neck. I'm like, jeez, oh, wife whore. Look, look, <laughs> literally the shit the wife turned to me. She goes, "That oldest daughter, she a hoe." <laughs> no wonder you got murdered in your driveway. Uh, Jesus. That I got a- dark quick. I was, just, <laughs> I was just like, well, she's just a teenager with hipster parents, man. Like, mom doesn't even bat an eye. She laughs when she is getting hit on by construction workers. She flips them off, but mm-hmm. the, but Joe Williams inside is like, oh, shit. She'll take care of those guys. Not take care of those guys, yeah, but take care of those guys. That's the poltergeist porn parody. <laughs> Fuck those construction guys too, man. What the hell are they do? They take way too long to make a pool. Mm-hmm. And one dude is just grabbing shit off the fucking counter with the window open. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm not true. paying you for this. Like, you are fired. You are fired. These are what pool guys are doing in this day and age. They're taking three years to get a pool made. These guys just fucking off. Yeah. We dug a hole. Isn't that enough? Now we're going to take a break. You got any cold beer? Oh, good God. But, all that being said, we did enjoy Poltergeist. It is a good film. We don't think it's cursed. Mm-mm. But, I mean, you can't listen to what our opinion is. we got to give everything a fair shake. So let's let's look at the dark side of things. Let's, let's look at where these uh, bodies ended up, possibly. These one-star reviews. Hated it. 
First up, we have TC, October 18th, 2022. One star, what the hell? The least scary thing I've ever seen. Uh, the least scary thing I've ever seen right next to any Cartoon Network Halloween special. Wow, okay. Downright goofy. No real scare factor. Hmm. Well, like I said, it's a... Uh, it's a nice movie. <laughs> it's a nice movie. Okay. On October 15th, 2022. Apparently a lot of Halloween viewings of this. Oh, yeah. Recently. One star kept stopping, so quit. <laughs> how do I get a... How do I get a refund? Movie kept stopping and couldn't watch it. Yeah, your internet provider. That's the problem. No, clearly it's the movie's problem. They need to be one starred for it. They're the one. Craig T. Nelson is fucking up my streaming ability to watch his movie. (laughs) So, fuck him. Pay your internet bill. Or move to a better place. There's the, yeah, it's all the bodies buried underneath your house. Fucking with your electronics. I mean, which we didn't really talk about that, how it's, that's the big line of the movie is they moved the headstones but kept the bodies where they are so that's where the real curse is is they just have these houses on top of old burial grounds which fits in with our previous series of uh, Indian burial grounds so this, the ground has gone sour indeed it has which although I, f- I feel like if you're you know using tractors or I don't know what the fuck you use to dig to build a house but, yeah but like you're, you're doing that like you're obviously going to go down more than six feet because you have to dig a basement most of these houses have basements unless you're in california even shit i'm in i'm in tornado alley and there's some houses in my area around here but when we were looking for a house had no basements to them that's which true. Is unfathomable to me in this in this in the tornado alley center of the states that they're not like should we build one fuck them so i suppose you could you could just assume that the majority of these houses don't have basements so they're just houses on top of concrete slabs because California, I don't know if houses in California have uh, basements in them or not. California, I don't know. That's a that's a California. That's a Google question. <laughs> we should find that out. I'll get right uh, on it. Definitely, Leslie here. I think is onto something with you. Okay. June second, twenty nineteen. One star. Missing footage. Oh shit! Here we go. There's a huge chunk of a scene missing, and it's an abrupt cut to the middle of the next scene. Do not buy the digital version. Clearly, don't buy the disc either, because I have a. That's the same one. I have build. a DVD of it. Like Which after so- this, did you have the same like sensation I had of like, man? After rewatching, I'm like, man, I should have bought that Scream Factory when they put it out years ago. I want that Scream Factory of Part Three. That's the sensation I've had, <laughs> but. Uh- uh, I won one, two, and three, but after, like, I just have a real run of the mill set of one, two, and three, and I'm like, fuck. Me too. One is on a solo disc, two and three are together on a flip. Is it a clamshell? Is it an old clam, like the cardboard clamshell? No, That's mine's what we have for ours. We converted it to a regular DVD case because we just <laughs> cut, cut the fucker up. It's like, ah, oh, it's poltergeist. Who cares? We'll just put it in a regular case. Bitch ass cardboard clamshells. Next, we have Ginny Serna, September 7, 2018. One star, I am a dissatisfied shopper. I shop here every now and then. Movie oh. froze since I began watching it. Never really saw the whole movie without problems. I actually like this movie. I paid for nothing. <laughs> so apparently the streaming version of this film is cursed. Is a little what wonky. Saying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, maybe Amazon just has a uh, corrupt file. And or something. I don't know. Kariana, July 16th, 2020. One star. What? <laughs> one star. Her title, 2015. <laughs> was not the correct one. <laughs> that was real loud. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> nope. It's, it's hilarious when someone buys the wrong version when there's two movies with the same title. I love it. Yeah. Heaven help someone who's trying to buy the... F- trying to buy black christmas oh dude yeah you're in big trouble they're they're super pissed i can't i can't wait to get to that series just to hear people bitch about bought the, the wrong confusion one. yeah and there's three of them fucking three of them yeah i i feel like the people who make that mistake have to be like 65 or older you know what i mean like you have to just not read product descriptions whatsoever <laughs> 
Like, well, I got Timmy that Poltergeist movie. He won't it. Like, it's the wrong one, Grandma. Well, I'm gonna one star it. <laughs> yep. Twisted Little Mess. Nice. On March 18th, 2017. Yeah, I like the name. One star. Packager's crust DVD couldn't play. <laughs> Just a bunch of fucking yeah, shards Burke. of plastic. Burke on May 2nd, 2016, one star, DVD skips and freezes. All right, so it's not just streaming that skips and freezes. True. This may be the best one I've stumbled on here. This is from Dustin. Hey. On January 26th, 2017, one star, OMG, couldn't sleep for days. Oh, my God. (laughs) Mary Wilson, August 16th, 2016, one star. Thanks. (laughs) <laughs> no sir didn't like it thanks Exorcist is my favorite horror film thank you <laughs> Fernando Bin- Binfa August 5th 2015 one star is this this is a joke worst movie I've ever seen really is, is that okay so he said is this a joke yeah is this wow. a joke Uncle Frank, is this a joke? <laughs> oh, Lord. Bartley R. Darrow on September 4th, 2007. One star. They're not here. Oh, my God. I'm so clever. I'm going to be the most clever person on Amazon ever with my title. I mean, I don't think you can escape it. It's like Nightmare 3. You can't escape talking about that movie without someone either singing Dream Warriors, trying to be like Don Dokken, or Poltergeist, and someone saying they're here. Mm-hmm. Angelica, tw- uh, July 19th, 2022, one star. Not worth it, unhappy. <laughs> Tried to send it back. Damien, Damien I... October 30th, 2022, one star, disappointing, extremely disappointed. The DVD is all but in French. Nice. So wait, it's so, it's in every other language but French? Yeah, you got the French and they're like, fuck you. <laughs> like how many I fucking can, dub overs do we need to do? I can't understand this movie. It is not in French. <laughs> what is this? Oh, 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 oh. To round out those one stars, to kind of to shadow that second one, this is uh, from uh, Asian letters, Asian <laughs> letters, Asian letters. I'm not gonna say Japanese or Chinese because I don't know because I'm fat head dumb American. Mm-hmm. I'm Jean Claude Van Damme, a kickboxer man. My training stinks. <laughs> June 25th, 2022, one star. If you want to watch dubbing. The dubbing changes to English every once every one to two minutes, so I can can't concentrate on watching it. Oof. <laughs> Actually I'm gonna add one more to that. The, I just happened to notice this one other one star from Williams. Uh possibly also in French. I'm not sure of the flag here, but it had to be translated to English. Uh, on October 18th, 2021, star. To see. Good movie. To see. <laughs> I love it. Oh, that's great. I've never dabbled into the foreign uh, one stars, but I figured why not throw a few in there for I'm, spice. I'm thinking that's going to have to start becoming a reoccurring thing. I didn't even know that existed. I, oh, yeah. I can translate everything except their names. I can translate the user's name on that one. So it's just Asian uh, lettering, Asian lettering. Yes. Japanese, Chinese, Korean. To, like we come up with Rondale Dale Branch, we have to come up with an Asian name. Lo Main. Um, I feel we're not going to be able to come up with a single one of those that's not going to be... Offensive? Yeah, like sidekicks. By the way, my name is not Charlie. It's just how it is. Um, Just excuse excuse us, fathead dumb Americans. We don't understand other cultures, so... (laughs) It's not we're being insensitive, we're just not that bright. We're just not educated. I'm not that bright. Uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, now that we're done with our Amazon one-star reviews, Evil, what does that mean? Time to lace up the boots. Cue the motorhead. Forget the sheet music because we don't need the fucking lyrics. It's time to play the game. 
time to play the game. Time to play the game! It's all about the game, and how you play it, what's happening? <laughs> Oh, God damn it! Lemmy strikes again. Oh. <laughs> it's too early. Sidebar, I was literally watching another thing on WrestleMania with him doing the singing for that for Triple H on one of the times. He never learns the lyrics. No, never. Why Why would he? He's Lemmy. Um, he could give a shit less. Right. <laughs> but it is time to play the game. And if you're new here... Welcome, but you're probably scratching your head asking yourself. What is the game? Well, the game is a deep cut in and of itself Where you got to pick a prop from the movie that we are covering, but it can't be a well-known prop So since we're covering poltergeist, I'm gonna go ahead and say it you can't have the clown Sean Clark has it You can't have the tree. It's probably at a McDonald's somewhere I, That tree didn't look real anyway. No, by the way every time I saw it I'm like that's a fake ass fucking tree and you can't have Carol Ann because she's dead. So, you gotta pick up. <laughs> That's an awfully dark. You probably could have left, left that one out. <laughs> I probably could have, but I didn't. So, pick a prop from the movie. Uh, make it weird. Make it quirky. Make it different. Uh, you can comment here on Spotify and or any other podcast apparatus that you have. Because now every single episode has the question, what prop will you take from this film? And if you don't do it on those podcast apps, do it on Patreon, do it on Discord, do it on YouTube, do it on Instagram, wherever the fuck you find us. Say it. Let us mail know. Us, mail us a letter. We'll read them all on the on the live stream. Yes. From we'll make uh, you famous. Rondale Dale Branch giving our podcast a one star review. But Or Asian Dawn. Maybe that could be our maybe that could, we could use that for the user, the fucking the gang that uh, Hans Gruber once released from prison in Die Hard. <laughs> yeah. Asian Dawn? I read about them in Time Magazine. Yes. Uh, yippee ki Motherfucker. Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, Evil. So I think I'll go first this week. All right. If, I'm if curious. With that. Curious. I'm super curious what you go with. Okay. So admittedly, again, not the most well versed in this film, so neither am I. Have recently rewatched this film uh, so to I. to get it reacquainted with my brain, and I think uh, the prop I'm gonna have to pick is from yes. one of one of my one of the only scenes I suppose that truly truly sticks out to me because I think it's uh, every bit of movie magic that I've ever seen uh, and just exquisite timing. So. What I'm going to take is one of, if not all, of the chairs in the kitchen, perhaps in oh, the uh, pyramid. Which we didn't talk about, but that is an incredible, I'm sure a painstaking scene, because that's in one shot. That is one shot, no cuts. And that would be a pain in the dick, even if you're moving a glued set of chairs together. Mm. Yeah, there are, there are all these chairs, and they have glue in strategic places or tape, I yeah, believe, to make them to make them look all fancy looking and shit stacked on top of each other, and within like three seconds of time. Mm-hmm. So you have like however many chairs there are is however many stage hands are looks behind like the camera. S- looks like six chairs. And I if would you guess, it look, yeah. And if you look close, yeah. once the once the chairs are up, when the camera comes back up, and the chairs are all stacked up. There's mm-hmm. a potted plant that's hanging, like in towards the living room. If yeah. you look real close, you can see it swinging. It's moving. swinging because a, oh, a, a PA a PA bumped it. Because they gotta jump in like raw frame, go move the chairs. No, 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 no. Yeah, um, but I mean, you gotta look real close. So no human being would stack chairs like this. You're right, Egon. Your mucus. So <laughs> I thought for sure you were going to go with the clickers, because that's another thing that's a completely dead in this day and age, is a remote control that works that well. Yeah. Those big old boxy fuckers that you'd have like a 9-volt yeah. battery in. Yeah, two-pounder at least. Mm-hmm. Yep, I remember uh, our old Magnavox uh, big, like... Is that even a brand anymore? I don't think so, dude. Like, we had a big <laughs> Magnavox... Like, no one can see this. I'm holding my hands up. Like a fucking He's showing s- me. Size of a fucking bar of soap. Like, uh, oversized bar of soap. Like, big old... That's a big bar of soap. 
fat fat boy, almost like a, I guess bigger, like a shoebox, like a big. I was like the the for people listening, the size of his hands apart there looked like the size of like a child's eight, like a size eight shoe. Yeah, real big because they did. They had nine volt batteries in the bottom of them. Oh yeah, I, I remember. Never they don't forget. even sell those anymore either. Like those <laughs> big ass fucking. Those used to be right there with the double A's and triple A's. You want these D batteries? We got them. Yeah. Yeah, like, well, it cost t- cost thirteen bucks and weighs twelve pounds, but here's four of them. <laughs> That's what my uh, my boombox takes, which will give oh, me Jesus. enough power for like two and a half hours. But <laughs> That's let's like put fresh batteries in the damn thing this morning. Sixty dollars worth of fucking batteries. <laughs> uh, batteries used to be just an insane thing we had to budget into our and blank tapes our lifestyle. Yeah, now it's yeah the blank tapes, both audio and video. Now mm-hmm. it's just. It's not a. It's an. That's another ghost. Mm-hmm. No one deals with that anymore. Throwaway batteries are almost dead entirely as a as a concept. True. Uh, before you move on to your uh, deep cut prop, evil, yes. we did forget. We have been technically forgetting the brown panty award. No one necessarily dies in this movie. I every once in a while I think like, oh yeah, we keep forgetting to do that. But I was like. Has anyone died I felt bad for? I guess not. Yeah. And no one really dies in this movie. Except, I guess, if we were had to give it to one, I'd say I'd give it to the Native Americans. So the yeah. Native Americans <laughs> win the brown panty. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. Uh, we're going to pick up uh, trash on the freeway with a single tear. So. That's, an Itali- that, that's an Italian man that just got granted Native American powers. <laughs> so, yeah. Sorry for forgetting the... Uh, Brown Panty Award for a few weekends or weeks. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say we didn't forget. We just didn't find anyone really worthy of it. Sounds better. Okay. Yeah. So. All right. I, I so, didn't mean to interrupt. <laughs> oh no 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 no. Uh, that was another thing that needed to be addressed at some point. Like, did they just forget about? It? Oh, they just don't feel bad about anybody right now. Okay. <laughs> uh, I had to. I had to fight to not go super pervy wanting something from Joe Beth Williams' uh, underwear wardrobe. <laughs> Yeah, so I was like, oh, I'll go a bit more, much like this movie. I'm gonna think R-rated, but I'm gonna my prop will be G-rated. So uh, I'll take her hair dye that she decides to gray out her streaks in. Nice. Totally thought you were gonna take that fucking cigar box full of weed. <laughs> a cigar box full of a dead bird. Which man, even that's another thing. Like, who has cigar boxes anymore? A new cigar box. I'm sure they're still out there, but man, I mean, shit. I've only seen one in my lifetime, yeah, and so, I still have it. <laughs> so here's the thing about cigar boxes. Uh, for anyone, oh, give me the four one one. I'm glad you got you got some info. Uh, on this. this is this is just a weird thing from my life. Like, so you have seen a cigar box. You own a cigar box. Like it's it's like that yeah. thick cardboard, that hard fucking cardboard. Okay. It's literally the it's a boy cigars that when I was born my dad got and I still have and there's still cigars in it. Damn. So we could smoke some cigars. Let's do it. Some shit cigar. Let's do it. I'll smoke a cigar with year you. Year of birth. Yeah. Why yeah. not? We'll like do men. that for a live show. Yeah. Like, like a couple stuff. of men. But uh, this is a weird thing now that you've fucking brought up cigar boxes that unlock this weird uh, memory in my brain. Uh, my grandma. My mom's mom, I would always go over to her house, and so you know how like grandmas would always have like that cookie tin, but it would always be like sewing. Oh stuff? Y- yes, hundred so percent. My Still grandma also always had cigar boxes, like not like one or two or three, like a fucking plethora of cigar boxes. So it would be cigar boxes that would have some of her like knitting or sewing or some would have like buttons some would have like screws but she also had she also had empty ones that like if i would be like hey use for those such things yeah don't throw that away we could use it she would give me she'd be like you can take this cigar box did she also did she also have something that my dad would constantly have either jars or mainly uh the metal uh like folgers coffee cans oh yeah filled with like screws yeah and they're all rusty Yes. Oh fucking! Yes. You have like a very specific smell. Yes, uh, I miss that smell. Yeah, now. me too. I hated it then. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I miss it. But so here's the deal: like she would, and I'm talking probably once every month. Like you know, my grandma would be like, "You can have one of them," like because I'd use it for like a piggy bank. I'd put my spare money in it, or like, "Oh, I want to put all my my GI Joe's guns or whatever." You know, like I'd have these boxes. 
that just made me think, I have never, not once, my grandma has never smoked. I never saw my grandma smoke a cigarette and or a fucking cigar, but she had 20 fucking cigar boxes. Who no, was like smoking these cigars? Then, uh, probably someone she knew, and they're like, I'll trade you these four cigar boxes for a blanket. And they're like, deal. I can put shit in those boxes. It's That's fucking weird. It's, it's a like, form of currency. Yeah, where did these come from? I'll never know. I might have to ask my mom. Like, I might just call my mom later and be like, so who the fuck smoked cigars in our family? Because that's... It was some- me, son. It yeah. was me. She's like, it was me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> liar, liar. It was me. That deep voice. Yeah, no, that just fucking trips me out, so... Same, because, yeah, we had some around, too, and other er, other places in the house, and, yeah, I would say probably four or five total that I've seen. No idea who ever was using those. Why? Yeah. Maybe, no, I, I can actually place it. No, I think on my mom's side, Grandpa, he did used to smoke cigars, because my mom used to say she would get sick of the car from smelling it because he would do it that w- in the car with the windows up and shit. Oh, okay. And, you know, back in that time frame, they're like, oh, that's... My smoking has nothing to do with you feeling sick. Like that's <laughs> that's that's bull hockey. That ain't real. That's not. A, that ain't no science. Like things it, it, you know. It's real. Things things. Yeah, things you know now that sounds super ridiculous if you think of that was not a thing then, but it was. Also, let me sidebar sidebar with the cigarette smoke and the cigar smoke. Um, oh, Jesus. My mom is like she's the opposite of a hoarder. Like my mom gets rid of everything. Don't want it. Yeah, she buys things. For us, like she buys things and uh, brings them yeah. to us, right? Like constant. Yep. It's like a here. I was I saw this and thought of you, and yep. she, she's on this kick right now where it's constantly like garbage bags full of clothes because she'll the like, clothes will be on clearance, and I I know you're I, like Tyson can use these pants or Jasmine would like this sweater or you guys like Future socks. Buying. Yeah, yeah. So she buys yeah. all this shit and then brings it over, and she always. Always is like you don't need to wash those. I've already washed them. You know, like I, I ran them through my washer and dryer. They're all clean. You can just put 100%, them away. Hundred percent. That's some mom shit. And you know what's even weirder and scarier is the wife is starting to turn into that with like shit. The girls around my house, like if they've outgrown, she will pre-wash those and put them in a bag and be like, you can sift through this. The you yeah. know people that come by and stuff. No cigar boxes yet though, but definitely with clothes, she'll pre-wash that shit and give it away. So, but that's the thing with the cigarette smoke is my mom will wash and dry them and be like, yeah, they're fine. Like you don't need to rewash them. And then she'll leave and you open up that bag and it just smells like fucking marbles. And you're like, ah, cause they can't smell it. They're, they're in they're They're, they're numb to it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so we got to wash these, we got to wash these hand me down clothes like two or three times just to get that like, like tobacco tar. Doesn't smell like anything to me. Mm-hmm. Maybe it must be your upper lip, son. It's, it's hardcore. Like she'll bring donuts. Like Jesus. that she, you know, and she'll be like, I thought maybe you guys would want these donuts. I bought them and didn't need any of them. Mm. And you open the donuts and they smell like cigarettes. And you're like, I'm mm, probably, carcinogen donuts. I'm probably I'm not going to do that. I'm not, you know, I love you, but I'm not trying to get cancer off of this glazed donut. <laughs> I've not that I, not that it smells like smoke, but I've also just tossed some food my mom has given me like in happenstance like oh it just came by for this like here take this and this and this and this and i'm like i'm never gonna eat some of this stuff and i'll be like oh yes it was delicious yeah or all half truth and be like ah oh, i left it out and forgot to put it in the fridge i was in such a hurry i had to throw it out <laughs> next time though i'll definitely 100 percent eat those scallops you gave me that were completely open on one end and <laughs> we're sitting in your truck for i don't know how long and you're like here you can cook these up these are good yeah. Like, yep, I bet they are. Uh, Please yeah. don't ask me about them later. Yeah. Uh, moms, dude. <laughs> they have a love, just like Joe Beth Williams would not leave this house for without Carol Ann. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but I suppose on that note, after dragging my mom through the fucking coals for a little <laughs> We just did our both our moms. But you know what's great is neither one are going to listen to our podcast because neither one really are into that kind of technology. So we're kind of free in that sense. Yeah, my mom doesn't even know what a podcast is. but Mine has one with our shit on her jacket, and she still doesn't know, really <laughs> understand it. I love she has deep a deep cut, cut podcast. podcast jacket. Yeah, I love it. What is it? I don't know. My son does it. Oh, it's so good. On that note, I suppose... We should probably get going because, after all, there's a lot of podcasts out there to record that our moms won't listen to. So, why not us do it? Or that didn't come off as well as I wanted it to. Take two. Do a take two. Here, a cut.
Take two. Because <laughs> uh, after all, there's a lot of movies out there and somebody's got to watch. So why not us, right? I got beat up once by three kids. Took my lunch money. They got hit by a truck. <laughs> and they're upstairs right now. <laughs>